These are the 12 fastest drivers from round one in ascending order, and this is last week's pole winner and race winner, Kaz Grala. Yeah, there's really only one thing better than a, than a major NASCAR race on any given day. And that's two. Yes. And these, uh, these drivers now feel they, they explained to their crew chief, I ran wide open, but it was a little tight. We're going to lose. We made some adjustments. We could see some mix-up in the, in the final result uh, compared to the first time. Then we heard Chase say the only thing he knew to do was be mindful of the steering wheel. That, that means when you're turning the steering wheel, you're starting off speed. So if there's any way that he can minimize that, then he could pick up a little bit of a lap time. And Chase was talking about being flat out. You might be flat out for a couple of laps, but as that run deepens later today in the race, oh, no, 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 no. it's not going to be anywhere near flat out. Yeah, we heard Austin Sendrick tell us early in the show that he was able to run about 20 laps wide open when they were down here testing. He said, now it's challenging me to do one. And that's when experience will, will pay off for some of these veteran truckers like Crafton, like Peters, and then the veteran cup guys that we have in the race, Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch. They've got enough experience under their belt to take advantage of these young kids that don't have all those laps, but the young kids have proven to be so talented. William Byron, Chase Briscoe looks like he's going to do the same thing and possibly do the same thing in 17 that William did last year in the truck series. So you've got all these different variables that have happened. And remember, Christopher was leading the race inside of 10 to go when he cut a tire down last year. William was running second when he lost an engine. So it's amazing that probably one of our more challenging racetracks that we have on the, on the circuit, that how these young guys adapt to it. And John Hunter Nemechek certainly didn't have the best truck last year, but he found himself in the right position at the right time at the end of that race and ended up winning. Nemechek started 18th in the race last year. That tells you what kind of qualifying effort and what kind of truck he had during qualifying. But this guy right here, Matt Crafton, was the pole winner, and the race didn't work out so well for him. So it doesn't matter where you start, it's going to be where you finish on the race. And I'll tell you what, if John Hunter Nemechek drives to victory lane in his truck, if I'm Joe Nemechek, I'm going to follow him right in there. I'm going to beat him. I might even beat him to victory lane and be there waiting for my son. Crafton fastest. Able to pick up just a little bit over. Yeah, ran a 96 in that first round, a 92 in this round. John Hunter Nemechek's two laps from round one to round two were, the, were within three one thousandths of a second of each other. And remember, if it goes true to form, because we're going in ascending order from our top 12 from the bottom to the top, each driver that qualifies should go a little quicker than the one before him, but it doesn't always work out that way. So far it has with the three we've had, and we'll see what Johnny Sauter does. It's just so close, Vince. One slip here or there, or the wrong adjustment, and you could lose five spots. So. I don't think we're going to go straight through the order, and rarely does it work out that way. But we're four for four so far. <laughs> Johnny ran a 30-90. He ran a 95 in round one, so half a tenth of a second better for Johnny Sauter. Here's the 23 of Chase Elliott. Remember, with only one lap of qualifying, that's why these guys go right to the top of the racetrack, trying to make this track longer to get that speed built up for to get to the start finish line to start your lap, and then right back to the yellow line when you're on the time. I love this view. See what Chase Elliott's faced with when he gets down to turn three. He starts just cranking her into the turn. He talks about minimizing the movement of the wheel. You can see there, just minor adjustments, good handling truck. And it's a fast truck. Certainly a hometown favorite here this weekend. He's from the state of Georgia. Third quickest with his qualifying lap. Within one hundredth of a second of what he ran in round one. Here's Kyle Busch. He won the pole earlier today for the Xfinity Series race in the qualifying that preceded our truck series qualifying. Kyle, along with Ross Chastain, Austin Dillon, and Jordan Anderson will run two races in one day. They'll run the Xfinity Series race, and then they'll run the truck race. Boy, it's a darn good lap going for Kyle Busch here. You see him almost a tenth of a second better than Johnny Sauter. And it maintains as he exits turn four, even gaining on it a little bit. You know, Phil, it's interesting. We A lot of times we'll watch practice at the end of the day. If Kyle Busch is here, especially, he's going to win the race. If nothing goes wrong, he's going to win the race. But what was so fun about those three practices you guys covered yesterday, that's not the case. He doesn't have a dominant 
truck. He's going to have to overachieve today to be able to get up there and beat guys that appear to have trucks that were faster than him yesterday. I thought that was interesting. He said, as we interviewed him earlier, Alan was visiting with him, and he said, you know, kind of struggled yesterday, couldn't find what they were looking for in the right balance. They worked on it a lot overnight, and maybe they found something here today. And a lot of times they come with something that for Kyle to drive that maybe a little bit of a departure, maybe something they want to look at. But his guys assured me that this is his truck is as close to to what Chris Perbell has as humanly possible, and and Noah Gregson as well. Alex Bowman in that 24, driving for GMS this weekend. Good to see Alex here in the truck series, and we'll see him. I believe a handful of races and uh, Chase Elliott some races for GMS. Maybe Kyle Larson, Spencer Gallagher in that 23 truck throughout the course of the season. A bit of an all-star truck. And here's Austin Sendrick. Another one of the young talents, just 18 years old. Been tracking second right now. Gonna be a really good effort here for Austin Sendrick. Austin, another one of those that had his heart broken last week at Daytona, involved in that early accident, shortened his day. Looking forward to getting back out and just logging some laps and having a full race. Just put last week behind him. Yep. Here's Noah Gregson chasing the boss, Kyle Busch. Yeah, qualified Kyle in the first round. Let's see if he can do it here in round two. About eight hundredths of a second off right now, halfway down the back stretch. Austin Cedric was able to pick up nearly a tenth of a second, so that was an improvement. Kyle Busch picked up. Looks like Gregson was going to slow down a little bit. So Noah Gregson slots in in the seventh spot with three left to qualify. Still a good effort, though, for Noah Gregson. Anybody that made this second round has done a good job today. Here's Timothy Peters, who was fastest in that first round for quite some time. Ended up third quickest in round one. Brand new truck. In fact, he is. Teammate Brett Moffat, both with a couple of new machines here this weekend. Nothing feels better than that as a race car driver, does it feel, knowing your guys have built you the latest and greatest technology, the latest aero, everything about it is, is new and current. Slots in in the number six position. You know, you wonder, okay, Timothy Peters was, was third quickest that first round, while well, now he's only sixth. It could have been some adjustments, but sometimes it could be as little as with these guys going wide open as the wind changing a little bit from one round to the next or from early in the second round to late in the second round. Two qualifiers to go. Can anyone knock Kyle Busch from the point? Chase Briscoe has been fast all weekend long. His teammate, Austin Sindrick, currently second quickest. You know, Vince, we talked about the beginning of the show about Chase Briscoe and Christopher Bell being two of the guys who are going to keep our eye on. I don't know that I would have said at the beginning of the show that Kyle Busch is a threat for the pole. Now, a threat for the win of the race, yes. But I, after what went on yesterday, I'm not sure that I would have put him up there as a potential pole, win, pole winner. And at the very least, he's going to be in the top three. Looks like maybe Briscoe got a little tight in turn one and two. He's a little bit higher on the track. Heard it bottoming out there a little bit. He's going to be right on top of him. Can he do it? Third quickest for Chase Briscoe. I think those BKR trucks are probably pretty close to one another. Sec second and third separated by, what, four hundredths of a second? Yep, sure are. Now we'll see if those KBM trucks are as well. <laughs> so can Christopher Bell unseat his teammate and team owner Kyle Busch for pole position or will Kyle Busch sweep the poles today after winning the Xfinity Series pole earlier and you know Christopher wants to beat the boss man the good way to work into getting a raise <laughs> try out running your boss tracking in the green oh he's got it wow what a Easily. strong move through the center of three and four and Kyle kind of had to cut practice so he